Lindsey Graham joins me now from Clemson, South Carolina. Senator, welcome Good back morning. to the show, sir. Good morning. Thank uh, you. I want to get to that last question I asked uh, Ambassador Haley, which is, does this change America's position here of prioritizing uh, what to prioritize in Syria? ISIS over Assad. Both Secretary Tillerson and Ambassador Haley have indicated ISIS is still the priority. What say you, Senator? I think ISIS should be Germany and Assad should be Japan, like World War II analogies here. Uh, accelerate the demise of uh, ISIL, their direct threat to the homeland, Assad's not. But I've never been more encouraged uh, by the Trump administration than I am today. Uh, Ambassador Haley just said on your program, you'll never end the war with Assad in power. So that means regime change is now the policy of the Trump administration. That's at least what I've heard. So you need more American troops to ex accelerate the demise of ISIL. We're relying too much on the Kurds. More American forces, five or six thousand, were to attract more regional fighters to destroy ISIL. You need a safe haven quickly so people can uh, regroup inside mm -hmm. of Syria. Then you train the opposition to go after Assad. That's how he's taken out by his own people with our efforts. And you tell the Russians, if you continue to bomb the people we train, we'll yeah. shoot you down. Well, okay. Do you think President Trump is ready to take <laughs> that advice? I mean, you're calling calling for troops uh, to be sent right. in. Uh, are you, are you going to introduce a resolution in Congress that gives him that authority? He already has that authority. Every, you got some good people on this program. I differ with them on the, in this regard. I think the president has authorization to use force. Assad signed the chemical weapons treaty ban. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an agreement with him not to use chemical weapons. What have we learned? That war criminals don't police each other very well. Uh, the Putin regime is a bunch of war criminals, and we expected them to police Assad. That didn't work out very well. So all these resolutions are limitations on using force, not authorizations to use mm -hmm. force. So I don't, I don't intend to vote for anything that limits our ability to uh, win the war against ISIL or replace Assad. So you think that Syria, a sovereign country that is not mentioned at all in the current war authorization, it, it is somehow you can send troops into that sovereign nation without having to have Congress grant the president more authority there. I think you're in the minority view on that, don't you think, Senator? No, we already got troops on the ground. I don't see anybody saying cut off funding. If you don't like the thousand American troops that are helping to destroy ISIL, cut off funding. Be, be consistent here. I want more American troops, five or six thousand like we have in Iraq, uh, to help destroy ISIL. That means it will accelerate the demise of ISIL. Uh, I want to train opposition forces to take Assad down. He's a threat to the United States because he's a proxy of Iran. He used chemical weapons. He violated a treaty yeah. that he signed. I think it's up to us to enforce that treaty. We're on sound legal footing here, but our strategy is not yet developed. What comes next? I'm glad Trump did this. He is no longer uh, Obama in the eyes of our enemies, but he needs to do more to close the deal. There's a new sheriff in town. Is there, do you think there's a moral difference between the use of chemical weapons and barrel bombs? No, there's a legal difference, not a moral difference. If you're a mother, your baby is dead. But we do have treaties that we've signed all over the world saying we're not going to let one nation use weapons of mass destruction. That's what the chemical weapons treaty is all about. But I will say this. If you kill babies with conventional bombs, it's still a moral outrage. Here's what I think Assad's telling Trump by flying from this base. F you. And I think he's making a serious mistake because if you're an adversary of the United States and you don't worry about what Trump may do on any given day, wow. then you're crazy. I have to say, you use the initials, but I think that's a first for Meet the Press, Senator Graham. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. it, you even got, we had a few people watching, uh, it raised a lot of eyebrows. I got to ask you this about the president's change of heart on this. And right. It, it, because uh, Jonah Goldberg in National Review, who is supportive of this strike, but this change of heart still concerns him. He writes, the strike on Syria is the single best proof that Trump has no overriding commitment to any ideological position. If Trump can abandon his position on this, all because of some horrific pictures on TV, what position is safe? Well, here's my view. He abandoned a position that was not working, which is leaving Assad alone. Uh, Obama said he has to go in name only. This president setting in motion actual 
strategy to get rid of Assad. To the American people, the war never ends with Assad. He's a recruiting gold mine for ISIL and Al Qaeda. He will not be accepted by the region yeah. nor his people. And so I'm glad the president did this. You, you want him to punish Russia more for his support of Assad. What is something yes. concrete that you think he can do in the next couple of months to punish Russia for its support of Assad? Sanction Russia for not only interfering in our election, but add a paragraph to my bill that says a Russia aided and abetted Assad in using chemical weapons because he did. There are Russian soldiers on the base where this attack occurred. The Russians intentionally, in my view, left chemical weapons in the hand of Assad, their proxy. So if I were President uh, Trump, I would go after Russia through sanctions, not only for interfering in our elections, but aiding and abetting uh, the use of chemical weapons by a war criminal. Uh, side. All right. A fired up Lindsey Graham this morning <laughs> from Clemson, South Carolina. Senator, thanks for coming on and sharing your views, even if they were not necessarily PG rated this, uh, this morning. <laughs> uh, good you. morning.